So um, I'm sitting in the park right now, enjoying the sun, but being uh, reading the book called Man Search of Meaning by Victor Frankl, who is the uh, survivor of um, Auschwitz, um, what is it called, camp? Um, prisoner camp, concentration camp during the World War II. He's a psychologist and I've been reading a lot and especially about how to over overcome, how to go through the difficult times in lives. You know, it's really difficult, yes, I understand, and really making me think about a lot about how I went through, how, been th how I've been through um, ob obstacles, um, the times where I wanted to give up, or the times that made me really feel weak, and uh, hitting the rock bottom. And because I remember those moments and those words that I'm reading from the book, it's uh, really empowering, um, motivational, and I really resonate with those words. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the words. So some few principles applies, few principles applying in our lives. So there are some external environments, circumstances, events, like people that we have no control over, right? But some accidents happen to friends or family or something happened. Some people steal your stuff or you are born in this country. You have no control over. There are so many things that variables that you have no control over. And one thing that you can do is that we as a human being um, can be influenced by these incidents, uh, traumatizing events, hardships, some injury, some natural disasters. However, the author, the physicist and the survivor of this concentration camp is saying, you know, we can decide to be a product of environment, but we can decide not to be 100% dictated and controlled by environment as well. Most people, maybe 80-90% people, decide to the environment dictate their feeling, their emotion, their life and their destiny. But what's inspirational and what I'm doing and practicing every day I wanted to share with you is, is that everything can be taken away from the man but one thing. The last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. So he's saying, no matter what happens outside of your control, in this example, he was in a concentration camp, he couldn't control that, but he was able to still have a human freedom to choose his attitude, how he would react to that environment. He's saying, there are always choices to make every day, every hour. There are a lot of opportunities to make a decision. A decision which determined whether you would or would not submit to the uh, external powers, circumstances. But you still have a choice to keep your own freedom. Which determine whether you become or you do not become the playing of the circumstances. And uh, you can decide to keep your own human dignity, freedom and spirit. And this was really empowering. So we have a choice and freedom to make inner choice about our life. There are some people can make, even if under difficult conditions and circumstances, like you know maybe your parents got killed by a car accident or you're in a concentration camp like the author, he's saying, even under any circumstances, we can decide mentally and spiritually how we take of those events. It is a spiritual freedom which cannot be taken away if you decide to. That makes life meaningful and purposeful. And there, if there's a meaning of life at all, then there must be a meaning in suffering. And suffering is the uh, e in eradicable part of life. Even as fate, death, without suffering and death, human life cannot be complete. 
in the way in which man accepts his fate and all the suffering it entails, the way in which he takes up his cross gives him ample opportunities. Even under most difficult circumstances, to add a deeper meaning to his life. He can decide to be, he can decide, or you can decide to be, to remain brave, uh, dignified, and unselfish, or you can decide to be bitter um, or nasty. Anyways, he also said, it is true that only few people are capable of reaching this high moral standards. He said, a lot of prisoners that uh, difficult circumstances take over their high moral standards and dignities. But some small percentage of people uh, remain brave, having the dignity and having the high moral standards. Um, I wanted to give you one more. Um, so if you're going through difficult times, obstacles, you want to give up, you feel like you're stuck, you feel depressed, you know, I've been there, but when I look back on the times when I was like 18, 19, 20, even like 23, 22, uh, you have challenges, you know, life challenges, personal challenges, obstacles, sometimes you didn't get the job you wanted to, the job interview was difficult or you know, whatever that, that thing is, but the way I look at it is that it is oftentimes those difficult times, those difficult times give you opportunities for you to grow and become stronger. So those exceptionally difficult external situations give us opportunity to grow spiritually beyond ourselves. These are kind of like a gift. Um, there's a phrase, what if it is a gift? What if that is given by a life for you to become stronger? So instead of taking that opportunity as dif just difficult things and then you submit to the external environment, you could choose to interpret those external events as a test for your own inner strength. If you look that way, then everything's going to be a test for you to grow and become stronger and a better person. And that is a really empowering way to interpret a lot of life events that we have no control over. So some people decide to close, close their eyes. They decide to give up their hopes. They just decide to give in to the uh, environments and life throws at you. Some decide to close their eyes to live in the past. And they decide to be just negative. They decide not to. Um, overcome those obstacles. And the life for such a people become meaningless, according to the author, and I agree. So you can make a victory, you can make a deeper meaning out of those any difficult life experiences if you make them. Because you can interpret that from a positive pers perspective, of asking yourself, what if those you know difficult things were a gift given to you for you to get over and become stronger? Um, that's inner strengths, and that is how you can you can uh, maintain your motivations. You can uh, go through uh, difficult times and difficulties because everybody is going to go through some kind of obstacles and life challenges. Some people can, some people cannot. It is up to your inner strength to interpret how those life events mean to you. And uh, if you have positive mindsets to treat those events, then you're going to come out stronger and better. So, only way for you to do that is to look for something better, bigger in the future. So, negative people tend to look at the past. Positive people are looking for something better, bigger, more meaningful from the future by attaching by attaching more powerful, more empowering meaning to some of those difficult life experiences. So yes, it is often these difficult, you know, hardships and obstacles that give you opportunity to become stronger. So 
these are gifts that are given to us by life. And it is up to us to decide to rise above these difficult obstacles and situations through suffering over the moment. And those people are going to survive because they have reasons and purposes, a meaning to go through the suffering. So look for the future, something bigger, better, more meaningful. And then life is, life without suffering is non-existent. You cannot avoid all the suffering and the pains and obstacles. So mindset change, a shift that you can make is stop avoiding pains and suffering. The better way to face lives, you know, difficult things, obstacles, is to accept them as they are. Stop avoiding from them and then attach more empowering meaning to it. Like think of those as a gift, gift for you to have better better life in the future, become a stronger person. So that is that. Once you realize that those sufferings and hardships in your life, once you realize those meanings of those events, then we can start refusing to avoid, minimize those painful events. And that is one way to look at your life, difficult things, obstacles, life challenges. And if you need motivation, then this kind of a mindset shift, the way you look at you know, difficult things, how you decide to attach meaning to it, how you interpret events are going to change the way you look at things. Maybe right now your life sucks. My life sucked 10 years ago. I could have chosen to just live like that, felt sorry for myself, I could victimize myself and then blame others that they didn't give me a better life. I could have lived like that, but I decided to attach uh, some different meaning. Maybe I told myself, maybe this is a test for me to become better. This is an opportunity for me to become better, to achieve more. And that is how I did, and that's how I kept my motivation um, because I looked forward to the better future as opposed to dwelling and then staying stuck on the past. So that is one kind of a way to keep some motivations during the hard time. Uh, I always look back sometimes once in a while, you know, and these days it's easy um, to do that. Um, まあそんな感じでね、あモチベーションが必要な時もあると思うけれども、まあ最初の方、一番最初は一番難しいからね。ただ、そういう経験をして、どんどん自分を強くなっしていく。経験をすればするほどね、あの、自分が強くなって、あ、It'll be easier for you. なんか最初の方はやっぱり自信がなかったりね。そう、自分、苦難を乗り越えた経験が少なければ少ないほど、やっぱり難しいけれども、その時にね、もしね、そのちょっとモチベーションが必要な時に、苦しいとか、ギブアップしたいなとか、なんでだろうって、自分を責めたくなる時はあると思うよね。俺も責めた時もあったしね。なんで、こんな世界に生まれた、な,なんで、た、例えばね、親、親の状況とかね。親の金銭的なあれとか、例えば自分の能力が低かった時とかね、なんで英語能力こんな低いんだろうみたいなのとかね。それでコンプレインすることもできるけども、ずっとそれだけしてたら何もポジティブなの生まれてこないから、要はね、ペインをね、その苦痛とかをレバレッジして、それをバネにどれだけ強くなれるか。その苦難をね、苦痛と見るのではなくて、この苦難は、そのね、チャレンジだと思って、これ今チャンスだと自分を変えるチャンスじゃないのかなって思えば、ね、もっとポジティブに見られるようになるし、人間どれだけ苦難とかミステイクをしたかだから、結局。っていうことで、あの、モチベーションじゃないけども、あ本読んでてさ、毎日でも。で、昔のことを思い出したなーっていう感じで、ちょっと動画を作ってみたというか、
もしねこれがモチベーションになればちょっとしたモチベーションになればいいと思うしねやっぱりね人生経験だよねってのもあるしだから俺絶対ね本はね読み続けるなと思うねやっぱりハンブルにね謙虚じゃないといけないからねうん本読めば読むほどどれだけ自分が知らないどれだけね自分が知らないことが分かってくるっていうかねっていうことでまあちょっとそういうねことを感じてますよ本読んでうんちょっとシェアしたかったなというかライフレッスンというかねこうやって俺はいろんな苦難乗り越えてきたなっていうそのアドバイスではないけどねうんたまたまかもしんないけどね。俺がたまたまそういうマインドセットを持ってたのかもしんないしね。で、このマインドセットは本当にいろんな人が使っているし、本でもあるしね。俺が読んでるマンサーチュミーニングはね、多分20世紀で最大のぐらいのね、本当にベストセラーの本だし、これ読むと考え方が変わるというか。うん。で、いろんな人がね、この本からコンセプト取り入れて、いろんな人が他の本でも喋ってるから、なるほどねって俺は分かってきた、ね。このコンセプト、前から知ってたけども、なんかこの、今の本読んで、あ、この人が一番最初のね、開拓者だったのかな、みたいなっていう思いがあって、すごい、痺れるというか、思い出しながらね、これってすごい大事だなと思うし、たまにね、その、東京ノベンバー10のイベントのあれでアンケートをやってるけども、モチベーションの保ち方とか、どういう考え方をサシさんがしてるのかを会って、聞いて、ね、取り入れたいですっていうのがね、すごい、そのアンケートの答えであってさ、モチベーション動画がすごい、あの、お、心に残ってますみたいなね、筋トレモチベーション動画とか、他の動画でも俺すごいモチベーションとかね、ライフモチベーションとか、自己啓発の動画すごい上げてるから、で、それをね、響いてる人がやっぱ見るし、その響いてるから東京イベント来たいんだな、みたいなのがあって、そういう意味で、あ、俺は結構ね、モチベーション保つの結構俺自分は楽、簡単なのね。俺はそういう人なんだけど、ね、それでちょっとね、アドバイスをしいじゃないけども、どういうふうに考えてモチベーション保ってんですかみたいなのがあったから、ちょっとこの動画をね、シェアしたかったなというか、これで役立てば、ちょっとでも役立てばいいかなと思って、動画をね、英語と日本語で喋ってみましたということで。Um, it's kind of getting chilly here, so we're gonna go walk. まあそんな感じで、また、次の動画でね。ということで。I'll see you guys next video. Bye bye. 日本語で、日本語で、日本語で何か言う。Say something in Japanese. Say bye. さよなら。